This is the coming revolution in higher consciousness. Listen now to Elizabeth Clare Prophet, educator, author, and authority on the most exciting story of our time, the coming revolution in higher consciousness. Glory unto the Lord within these temples, O God. In thy name, we thy servant, sons and daughters, gather in this hour as seekers of truth. For we would know the truth that would set men free, that promised truth and comforter in these troubled times. Make our hearts one, O God, as we come now and reason together to discover the living word, I am that I am. O company of saints robed in white, archangels of the Lord, angels of the sacred fire, gather ye, for this people would know thy law and embody it and go forth then to heal the cities and the states and the nations. Use us, O God, for we have come solely for thy mission and for the fulfillment of thy prophecy. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Mother, we thank thee. Amen. While I have you standing this evening, everyone, I'd like you to take out the booklet that's been passed to you for the salutation to the Son. Our teachings come from the heart of Saint Germain and the heart of your own I am presence as well as the heart of your superconscious mind. This is Saint Germain and this is the great sphere of light representing the source from whence you came. We have all descended to the one source and so we salute the sun. It is number one on the very first page. <clears throat> Let us give it together as we make a joyful noise unto our Lord. O oh, mighty presence of God, I am in and behind the sun. I welcome thy light which floods all the earth into my life, into my mind, into my spirit, into my soul. Radiate and blaze forth thy light. Break the bonds of darkness and superstition. Charge me with the great clearness of thy white fire radiance. I am thy child, and each day I shall become more of thy manifestation. Thank you. Won't you be seated? I'm very grateful that you have welcomed me to your beautiful city, and I am truly happy to be here again. What brings me here and what brings you here, I think, is a mutual concern for events happening upon the earth and the deep desiring of our hearts to access a greater light of the universal Christ that is promised to us, that is truly the abundant life. Our particular subject this evening is St. Germain's teaching on alchemy. The alchemy is the all chemistry of God, and it is a science that enables us to understand that there is not only a universal Christ, but a universal light, a universal power, wisdom, and love, which is our heritage. We ought to have the fullness of the abundant life that Jesus came to vouchsafe to us to remind us of our ancient heritage in the past golden ages, in the higher octaves of light, and in the central sun. We've put together four of St. Germain's book in the little book that you have seen. And it is truly my great joy to be able to bring to you his message. The message of St. Germain is one of the revolutionaries of the spirit of East and West of all ages. It is a wonderful thing today to hear his call and to know the history of St. Germain. And I will be telling you about his previous embodiments and the major role he plays in our lives today. His cry to all the world is, light bearers of the world unite. Many of us are in New Age movements and have pressed on and had the courage to desire and to seek 
more than we have been told, whether in religion or in politics or in what has been handed down to us as the way things are supposed to be on this planet, but they quite aren't quite that way. And we know that they should be that way and we know that there is a tremendous sacred fire within us all, which when united together can truly stop what appears to be a downward spiral of civilization, misuse of nuclear energy, and people not able to control the conditions of life, their circumstances, forces of nature. Somehow we know we were ordained to have the dominion of God in us from the beginning. But there is a certain sense of helplessness that I find as I travel around the world. Sometimes it is a cynicism. Sometimes it is a fear of those things that may be coming. This fear is pressed far beneath the subconscious. I was amazed to find in Australia when people came before me asking for me to make calls for healing. Over and over again, they, they said to me, heal me of my fear. And I would say to them, why are you afraid and what are you afraid of? And they would say again and again, I don't know. So I said to Saint Germain, what is this record in these people? What has happened on this continent? And he showed me a very, very ancient time when there had been a nuclear holocaust on that continent. We don't think in those terms today. We think that civilization is at best 5,000 years old, and yet we are told that Atlantis sank 11,500 years ago or more. And then the lost continent of Lemuria that was there for hundreds of thousands of years, and before that, pre-Golden Ages, and then before that, in the etheric octave. We have been through a long history of this earth, many of us. We contain that ancient memory, and even though we might not have been an embodiment, we sense so much being a part of all life that it is though something of ourselves evolved through the cells and through the waters and through the air and through the earth. We are then at a moment of tremendous opportunity, having come to this place where the knowledge of God's light and the new age is dawning. There is a moment, a moment in history when as never before, we can play a part that can make the difference. We are especially gifted by being on this North American continent, by having a history of freedom and a tradition in our Judeo-Christian religion of those who fought and won their freedom and counted not the cost and did pay the price. We are at a moment when all of this could be lost or all of this could be the fire to literally de devour the spirals of degeneration and death and the forces that assail whether our youth or our children or our own hearts. This is the great message of Saint Germain. It is not a new message, but it is indeed a new opportunity. Some of you who understand 2,000 year cycles realize that there are dispensations and that there are ages and times when light can be expanded. This, as you know, is an age of the dark cycle. It's called the Kali Yuga. And in the very midst of this cycle, as we are all attempting to bring forth the light and attending that second coming and looking for the souls of light sent to us, we realize that first Earth must face a tremendous returning planetary karma. Karma is coming through the four horsemen. It comes as plague. It comes as death. It comes as manipulation of the economy as symbolized by the scales. It comes upon us then, and what do we do? Some among mankind are simply trodden down by this returning karma. Others face it with a tremendous light and determination and survive. We find that in order to survive today, there are things we have to do, each one according to his own nature and evolution, whether it is diet or fasting or meditation or prayer or a coming apart or certain professions and calling. But everyone I meet has a sense of destiny and a sense of mission. I'm talking about the light bearers of the world. And I see them night after night. For 27 nights, I was in Europe, from Finland, Helsinki, through Scandinavia, through the British Isles, in the main portion of Europe, and finally finishing in Portugal, where I saw the most amazing devotion among the poorest of people 
and I thought to myself, surely this land has been blessed by the visit of our blessed Mother Mary at Fatima. Beloved Mother Mary, the Archaei, is a twin flame of Archangel Raphael, whose retreat in the etheric octave is over Fatima. It is amazing that we find nation after nation, people coming forth with the same beautiful eyes of light, the same searching, the same knowing, the same sensing. First of all, I want to bring you a message that there is a tremendous spiritual unity among those who do not belong to similar organizations and have really never come together in one place. And by the way, next summer, 1987, we are planning our international conference at the Royal Teton Ranch in the heart of the Inner Retreat. There are so many people around the world who see the ranch and want to come and see the faces. My sense is that if all of these people could set aside their differences, could stop arguing about which New Age teacher is better, or whether we should eat meat, or whether we shouldn't eat meat, or whether we should do this or that, and realize that we have such an endowment of an understanding and a background, that to unite together in the fervor one of the violet flame and the knowledge of the precipitation of the abundant life I am convinced, because I have seen it on a small scale, that we can make the difference. I am also convinced that for now 75 years and more, those reaching for the New Age who have held their Congresses and who have come together have really not made a dent in the serious conditions that plague us because they have departed into byways and into areas of separation. I say that truthfully because of the devastation that happened from the Bolshevik Revolution to the First and Second World Wars, wars continuing today, and who is in control of the wars? Well, according to the records of Akasha, war was brought to this planet by the fallen angels and their mutual rivalry for the territory. And who do you think they set up as fodder uh, to move one against the other as cannon fodder to secure their territories? It hasn't stopped. It went on ages ago. Some of you who read Zachariah Sitchin know that he says that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by nuclear energy. Mark Prophet, my late husband and the founder of this movement, also said that, and he got it from the Akashic Records, and Sitchin got it from the Sumerian tablets. And we know that that is why uh, the Salt uh, Sea and the Dead Sea came to be what it was. And so the entire Sumerian civilization that had inventions of what we have today and beyond was wiped out in one night. So what do we understand? We have been through this again and again and again. If peace marches could accomplish the ends, they would have already accomplished them. And I am concerned lest we march and do not understand that the real power of stopping nuclear war or the misusing of nuclear reactors lies within our hearts and within our chakras. And that the prayer form that is the most powerful way to release the fruit of meditation is the dynamic decree. So tonight, I would like to give you an example of the science of the spoken word. I would like to tell you that the seven mighty archangels have poured out the vials of their seven last plagues, and they have dictated to me a book that you can read concerning what is the meaning of the returning of planetary karma on each of the seven rays. The seven rays correspond to each of your seven chakras, and so we are personally affected we are very much affected by every event that take, takes place upon the planet. And I am sure that you are, and I am certain that you feel a pain and a, a Weltschmerz, a world sorrow, as, as Mother Mary does and as we identify with this beautiful being of light who is both our sister, our mother, our teacher, and truly uh, the mother of our Lord. The Ascended Masters are many. They have risen from every race and religion, and you are to, intended to ascend in this life. That is the glory of the Lord that is upon you now. It is the tremendous promise, and it, it is the gift of God in the teaching of the everlasting gospel. That is prophesied in Revelation 14, and that everlasting gospel is delivered by an angel who flies in the midst of heaven. 
All these things are happening almost simultaneously. We think of the book of Revelation as happening sequentially, but the book of Revelation is a spiral, not a line. And it happens to every individual. And it is the most stupendous study of the soul and the psychology of the soul and the records of the subconscious of all ages. What the book of Revelation really is, is an outline of our path of initiation under Alpha and Omega. And Jesus starts out that book of Revelation by saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. So we are intended to take the name of God, that name I am, and understand that Alpha and Omega within us begin at the crown chakra, concluding at the base and rising again. That this is the symbol of the spirit matter cosmos and of the body and blood of Christ that we are intended to eat, to assimilate, and to become. And when we talk about assimilating that body of light, we have that profile in chapter 10 of Revelation of the coming of the seventh angel. Well, beloved, Saint Germain is that seventh angel without a doubt. And he is the master of the seventh age. And he is the most marvelous ascended master who is your friend and my friend and has been long before we have ever been able to even conceive that such a being could exist or that we have known him. The age of Aquarius is an age of freedom. The seventh ray is the violet flame. It is a flame of freedom. It's the flame of alchemy, which means transmutation. And remember Jesus, the alchemist, his first miracle was to change the water into wine. Now that really happened. I heard recently that some theologian was espousing the theory that Jesus is a great hypnotist and he had the great capacity to convince everyone at this marriage at Cana that he had actually performed this miracle of turning the water into wine. I couldn't believe that a theologian had to resort to accuse Jesus of being a hypnotist uh, to justify that uh, this couldn't possibly have happened and therefore everybody else was fooled. Well, this is the case that Jesus was a master alchemist. And our book on the lost years of Jesus shows that he studied for 17 years in Tibet, in the Himalayas, in India, Nepal, and came back by way of Persia. He studied and learned and mastered the teachings of the great lights of antiquity. The religion of the Divine Mother that is espoused in Hinduism has come down to us from that lost continent of Lemuria, where the Mother Flame was enshrined and where those shrines were desecrated through the misuse of that sacred fire. And that was the real reason for the sinking of the continent of Lemuria. Karma that is meted out to us as cataclysm can be explained as natural forces. Scientists have many explanations, but what initiates the natural forces? It's the force that's in you and me, the power of good and evil, and the momentum of the whole human race occupying the planet. Therefore, I do not believe that cataclysm or final wars and tremendous plagues and troubles are predestined by God, but I do know they are predestined by us, except we have forgotten that we are using a law a law and a power of energy that works 24 hours a day. Whether we engage in it or not, we are using energy and we are sending energy forth. Now, a lot of people on this planet today are ex accepting as inevitable this descending karma, the four horsemen, the vials being poured out, and those things that they fear are coming on the earth. And many Christians are taught that they are inevitable, and the cure is the second coming of Christ, which puts all in one individual the whole responsibility for the planet Earth and making things right. But Jesus did not cause the axis of this Earth to be tipped. It was the karma of mankind. Yes, Jesus died for our sins. He bore our karma for the 2,000-year period of the age of Pisces. This is the truth of this teaching. Jesus bore that as the avatar of that age. That 2,000 years is up, and that's why you feel heavy. I can remember 35 years ago when I did not feel the weight of world karma as I feel it today. 
that age has transited and we are in Aquarius. And Aquarius is the age of responsibility and of the scientific use of God's laws. And what happens to us is that we are reaping what we have sown, which is the fact that we have neglected in 2,000 years of embodiments to balance that karma which Jesus was carrying. We have the mistaken concept taught to us in Christianity that when he died for our sins, the sins vanished. They didn't vanish. Karma doesn't vanish. That was set aside and he bore it so that we could develop that Christ consciousness according to the teachings he set forth when he was here. And what has happened to those teachings? From the very first century, they have been tampered with. They have been left out. They have been made to conform to the doctrine of the then most powerful church. And when I release to you my next book, you will see a documentation of this, and you will see what are those lost teachings of Jesus and how we have been cheated and stripped of our divine inheritance and the understanding how to fulfill this wondrous promise of Jesus. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Jesus is in the heart of your Father and my Father and he descends into our temple. No respecter of persons. It doesn't matter whether you belong to a church or whether you don't. That universal Christ is in you and with you. And the point is that you should expect to be able to master the science of alchemy taught by Saint Germain and Jesus. You should expect to be in control of the elements, to call forth the violet flame when that radioactive fallout hits your body, and not to have only iodine and other things that you can do to alleviate the stress. You are not intended to be a victim of this fallout of any kind or of planetary karma. And the light is already with you to meet it. But the techniques have been lost. And I tell you, the priests, the false priests in every world religion that took over those religions after the original founders have gotten the idea that they should take the power to themselves and keep the masses ignorant. And we are outside of the churches now finding the mystery of God. And it says in chapter 10 that when the seventh angel begins to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as, as he hath declared it to his servants, the prophets. By the spirit of prophecy, we know and have the teaching of Saint Germain. He has begun to sound. He has been sounding throughout this century, and he was sounding as the wonder man of Europe for two centuries in Europe, and they would not listen. They would not hear him. And Saint Germain incurred tremendous karma for having done this. He took on the karma of releasing light, of manifesting tremendous miracles, and the people called him the devil. And Christians today, some, the few, also call him the devil. And nothing could be farther from the truth. So I would like to tell you that the alchemy of the word is yours. It lies in your power today to increase the consciousness of God where you are. I want to tell you that I am not here to disrupt your path, but to add to it what I believe is the most essential ingredient, and that is the violet flame and a direct relationship to Saint Germain as holy brother. And that is what his name means, holy brother. He is friend and companion. Now that alchemy itself will work change. When John took the little book, it was sweet in the mouth and bitter in the belly. If you want light and higher truth, you have to understand there will be a chemicalization. Even the physical atoms of your being will change. And the light itself, the light of God in you can change your genes because when you change your consciousness, you change your genes because your genes are what you are and you're not a victim of your ancestors. The only victim that you are is of yourself. So I'd like to talk about my slides now and tell you what I think is most important for us to understand in this path of precipitation. This is the symbol of the sun behind the sun. And this is also showing you a vortex of light, that great central sun. We descended from the central sun 
I have seen the great central sun physically and spiritually. I can tell you there is the presence and heart of God as Alpha and Omega, our God parents. I can tell you that I have been shown and had awakened in me the memory of the birth of our twin flames in the heart of that great central sun. We are made in the image and likeness of the Father, Mother, God. Every one of you here has a counterpart, your twin flame made out of a very unique and single blueprint of life. You came down from that fiery ovoid, separated out, each one having his own unique causal body, and went forth in embodiment, in alternating embodiments, taking on the masculine or the feminine half of the whole. You were sent by God to be manifestations of the Father, Mother, God, and wherever your twin flame is, by your side, somewhere on the planet or in other octaves, at inner levels and hopefully at outer levels, you are performing a singular service that no other souls can perform. And you need to remember this every day, the thoughts that I think, the love that I give to my family, ultimately goes back to the heart of my twin flame and elevates that one. You were sent on a mission, got lost on the way, deterred by false teachers, fallen angels, who took us out of the way of the mystery school of Eden on Lemuria, took us away from the initiations of Maitreya, Sanat Kumara, the Ancient of Days. And there we began to make karma that took us farther and farther apart. Hence today we are seeking and searching for that beloved. And that takes a major preoccupation of our lives, finding the one and only, that love we know exists somewhere. And the path to finding it is the path of union with the universal Christ and the universal God, the one God. And when you are one in God, you are never separated from your twin flame. So the fiery ovoid is the source, and it's very important to get to the source when we begin to study the revolutionaries of the spirit who have gone before all of us. We have to think in terms that we are in the world of effect and the, the world of the matter cosmos, yet we are living simultaneously right now in our God presence in the central sun. In fact, we have never left heaven, but a portion of us, this soul, this potential to realize God that was given, the ultimate endowment of free will has descended into this concrete existence. The major challenge then we have as light bearers which is our true name and calling, is to access this stupendous light, focus it in our chakras, release it by the command of the decree of our own spoken word directly in to those world conditions that must have the all-consuming fire of God to solve people's problems. This is our major work. It's called the mighty work of the ages. That's a term of the alchemists. So you need to remember that above you is a giant sphere of light right now. Some have called it the divine monad. Moses saw it as the I am that I am, the tremendous fiery presence of God. This great sphere of light above you is called the body of cause. It is the spirit body. It is absolute God and absolute perfection. And it has a similar pattern everywhere it is manifest, seven concentric rings. And yet we are told that one star differeth from another star in glory. You have a star, the star of Jesus' causal body shown over Bethlehem. It was so brilliant when he was born that it could be seen. Astronomers, of course, have an explanation for it, but that tremendous star is your I Am Presence. And by the name I am and the prayer and the dynamic decree, you can release that light into form. So we build and increase our causal bodies. We are all created equal in the beginning. And from that moment forward, each of us is different. We, our twin flames together, created in a mission, have accentuated one or more of these seven rays. Seven rays correspond to the seven color rays, seven planes of heaven. The seven churches are the houses of the seven rays that Christ addresses in Revelation as he comes the great initiator. We have to have the mastery to enter those houses, those temples, and perform the calling, the unique calling of each one of those sanctuaries of our seven chakras. So there are seven archangels of the seven rays and seven chohans, and each one teaches the path of the individualization of the Christ flame on that path. 
The blue ray, which corresponds to the blue chakra, for instance, is the power of God, and it manifests in government, in the economy, in order, in organization, and it is the presence of the will of God and of the Father. We learn lessons on that first ray that carry us on other rays where we are mastering love and wisdom and, the, and science and healing and truth and service until finally we arrive to the seventh ray that corresponds now to our seventh age of Aquarius and it is the ray of freedom of the priesthood of the order of Melchizedek that is continuing on the etheric octave in the temple of the Archangel Zadkiel, which is an etheric temple over the island of Cuba. Now some of you are very interested in Melchizedek, and he too is an ascended master. He was a great light of the Old Testament. His is the first record of serving communion. He served that to Abraham, who tithed to him. And what do we find in Hebrews? The writing that Melchizedek was made after the likeness of the Son of God. Now, most Christians don't concede that anyone but Jesus was made as the Son of God, but it says in Hebrews that he was made, made like unto the Son of God. It also says, of Jesus thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, these two facts, that Jesus was a priest of the order of Melchizedek and that Melchizedek himself was made in the likeness of the Son of God, could only have been known and taught by Jesus. No one really knows who wrote the book of Hebrews. If Paul wrote it, I believe Jesus gave him that information directly, as Paul says again and again, that he saw Jesus directly, not only at his conversion, or else maybe Jesus wrote it down and it was copied. In any case, the seventh ray of Saint Germain, of Archangel Zadkiel of the seventh ray, of Melchizedek, teaches us what ritual? The ritual of the atom, the electron, the ritual of science, the ritual of religion, which means to bind the soul back to God. Not the dead ritual that everyone is weary of, but an enlivened ritual, the ritual of planets coursing around the solar system, the ritual of the central sun, the ritual of mighty seraphim, whom I wish you could see as God has showed them to me as they procession from the great central sun to the planetary homes. Did you know that seraphim minister to you? They come to you. They place their auras around you. They can absorb from you disease and karma if you will call to them in the name of Christ. I call to the mighty seraphim to come now, surround this body of light bearers, penetrate the atoms, purge them of karma, and draw them into alignment with their inner blueprint. That is a call you can make to summon angels. I have just concluded a weekend in Vancouver on the healing power of angels. Angels are magnificent intercessors, but they will not intercede unless invited because of this law of free will. So we are building spheres of light. That's what Jesus meant by when he said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. This is your Father's house, and every sphere of that causal body is a mansion that is yours in heaven. In fact, when you are really in profound meditation, you may ascend to this plane. When you get to this plane, you may be in the state of samadhi, or you may be going beyond it to nirvana. These things are possible today. What is important is that you know it is a treasure house and a storehouse of abundance. This is the source of the abundant life and which in the beginning was vouchsafed to us by the sacred word, the Om. The Om has never ceased to sound. How often do we in Western civilization go anywhere in public where there is not a bombardment of the sound waves, almost an attempt to cancel out the great silence as well as the great cosmic hum that is all around us. When you chant the Om, you are not the originator of it. You are like Krishna's flute. You are an instrument through which this sound is reverberating for the sustaining of the matter cosmos. When the sound is withdrawn, matter begins to crumble. It goes into a disintegration spiral. Saint Germain showed me why we are in a state of decay, because we are not sounding the word of God. We are not raising the sacred fire in our temples, and therefore we see around us disease, old age, death, just as Gautama saw them. And yet there is the solution to human suffering, but we're not applying it. 
and we don't exercise this powerful center of the word in consonance with the other six. I would like to invite you to intone this om and to see yourself. Imagine this great central sun far beyond the galaxies. Recently, they've seen a sun presence that is a greater force and power than they have ever seen in the known universe. How many of you read an article about that? It's an amazing thing. It came on the 7 o'clock news one night. There is a central sun. Visualize it as a tremendous, stupendous presence of power. That is the origin of the Om. And here we are, vessels, a chalice to receive it. So we open up our chakras, we consecrate our breath to the sacred fire breath, and we say, sounding of the Om is the beginning of the word, without which was not anything made that was made. John wrote that, but where did he get it? He got it from the ancient scriptures of the Far East, word for word, that oh, those opening verses of the book of John come out of the ancient Hindu scriptures. In the beginning was the word, and the word without the word was not anything made that was made. So in the beginning you, the word, has created this manifestation. If we're going to take command of this planet, we have to do it by the Word, and the Word incarnate. The Word incarnate in Jesus Christ is intended to be the Word incarnate in you. Wherever I go, people ask me, where is the avatar? Is he this teacher or that teacher? Is a divine man-child going to be born? We're missing the point. This is the universal age when Christ is born in all of us, the great exemplar Jesus, the great luminaries of the Far East and the West of all ages have set an example, and this seventh age, the key to it is that you and I are intended to embody this Christ. For this statement, remember, Jesus Christ was crucified making himself equal to God by declaring himself to be the Son of God. And he rebuked them and he said, Didn't Moses say to all of you, Ye are gods? And if I say, I am the Son of God, why do you say that I blaspheme? Moses told the children of Israel that they were God in manifestation. Jesus came to show the light of the sun. This is a tremendous heritage, but we're not using it. We have been convinced by an overlay of condemnation that we're imperfect, that we're sinners, that we don't have enough attainment or somehow we're not good enough because we did this little terrible thing and that little terrible thing and somehow we could not possibly conceive of ourselves as the one who is sent to deliver that light. You are sent. You are the one sent to the one you love most, to your families, to your children, to your city, to your nation, your planet, your solar system, and your universe. You. Don't look around you for the avatar. Look to the face of the Lord Christ and invoke his presence in your temple. You are in the process now of giving birth to the divine man-child as the alpha of the spirit and the omega of matter, the Father, Mother, God, meet in this wonderful heart chakra and give birth to that Christ consciousness. This is what has been taken from us as a nation, as a Western civilization. And it is a crime because we are on the verge of such a stupendous victory. We could move into a golden age today if we would take the eternal truth and apply it. And you don't have to take all day to apply it. You can give decrees. You can be in a right spirit and you can go out and master yourself and be in any field of human endeavor that is constructive and be fulfilling the path of Christhood balancing your karma and watching how God fills you with a greater and greater power. This is a painting of the Ascended Master, Jesus Christ, your dearest friend and brother, who cried out because he said, he that seeth me does not understand that he seeth me not by the Father who sent me. It is the one who sent me. His, his are the words that I speak. I speak not of myself. 
Saint Germain, I would like to tell you about his embodiments so you can see what he has played in our lives. 70,000 years ago, there was a golden age civilization where the Sahara Desert now is. Saint Germain was a ruler of that civilization. It was fertile country with a semi-tropical climate. It extended the entire width of Africa on the east until it reached the Himalayan mountains. The majority of the people retained full conscious use of the wisdom and power of God as his sons. They knew they were extensions of the great central sun. It was indeed a golden age. Because there have been golden ages on this planet, we long and yearn for the golden age. We have the experience and the memory. The, the empire was filled with great peace and happiness and prosperity. Saint Germain as the king emperor was a master of the ancient wisdom. He ruled by light. His empire was the living example of perfection. He was looked upon almost as a god by the people. But when they said this, they knew they were seeing a manifestation of God, not a god to be worshipped, but one to be emulated. They had great love for the wisdom that he brought. By and by, as has so often happened, the people became enmeshed and meshed in sense gratification. The, the king was instructed by the Ancient of Days, the same one that Daniel knew, to give a banquet and announce his decision to withdraw. The banquet was held in the capital city of the sun. Saint Germain was accompanied by his children, and after a meal which had been entirely precipitated, a cosmic master spoke out of the great silence. He brought the warning of a crisis to come. He announced the withdrawal of the king and his children. He rebuked the people for their ingratitude and their neglect of their great God source. He reminded them of the command to obey the law of the one, love. And he gave them the following prophecy of their own karma. He said, a visiting prince approaches your borders. He will enter this city seeking the daughter of your king. You will come under the rule of this prince, but the recognition of your mistake will be futile. Nothing can avail, for the royal family will be drawn into the protection and care of those whose power and authority are of God, and against whom no human desire can ever prevail. These are the great ascended masters of light from the golden etheric city over this land. Here your ruler and his beloved children will abide for a cycle of time. The king and his children withdrew seven days later to the golden etheric city of light. The visiting prince arrived the next day and took over without opposition. In 2,000 years, the land became barren and there followed a great cataclysm. Saint Germain gave a dictation in 1983 in which he commented. He said, thus, beloved hearts, we come to a similar moment to that of that final hour of the golden age when I presided where the Sahara now is. My family is much larger than it was then, for I include every one of you who love me as my very own family. In that hour, our family was taken to the golden etheric city of life, of light. In this hour, we have summoned you to a higher place in the mountains of the north. Saint Germain has called us, and what we have to understand is that the ascended masters have set aside that royal Teton ranch for those who would come apart and build again a golden age civilization. But what is more important, the entire continent of North America is the place of the reincarnation of those who lived in that civilization. Many of us who gather here, who are interested in truth and a path of light, are so interested because we remember the path we are what are called old souls. We have lived through Lemuria and Atlantis. We have seen it happen again and again. And a certain part of us knows that we can fulfill this, and another part of us senses the urgency because we have seen the consequences of neglect. And another part of us 
is truly sorrowful that we may have in any way contributed to the decline of past golden ages by not being where we should be in consciousness, by going after these visiting princes, those who come drawing us here and drawing us there with their vibrations that glitter, that have glamour, that have promise, always promising us something, but not having to pay the full price for initiation, which is the balance of karma. It's like being offered the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil by the fallen angel in the garden, the false teacher and the false guru who comes and says, you don't have to pass your tests, balance your karma, and submit to the cosmic Christ and the person of Maitreya in order to eat of this fruit, this initiation of your chakras. Here, I'll give it to you, and you'll suddenly become as wise as we who are the serpents. Serpent is a name for a band of fallen angels. They were men and women like you and me, these tempters who took us away from a path that is not easy, but it is joyous. It is not easy to go up the mountain and go against the mainstream of civilization, but every step we gain and master is worth the effort because it gives to us a new ability to be an instrument of light and to see that light transferred, and to see others healed, uplifted, drawn back to their God source, because we have decided that there's nothing more important happening on Earth than us getting to the place where we can do something for the many, many people who need that light. So Saint Germain tells us that we are these light bearers come again. It has taken us 70,000 years to reach a place where we could have the opportunity, his sponsorship in the founding of this nation, his sponsorship of our constitution, of the drawing together of the reincarnated souls of the 12 tribes of Israel and many other light bearers from the mystery schools. America is our alchemy. It is our gift and our opportunity. Once again, false gurus in the economy and in government have taken the nation hither and thither apart from the essential frame, flame of individualism that St. Germain endowed us from in the beginning. America is the last hope of the light bearers and the ascended masters because it is the freest nation and the most abundant nation and the place where we can still perform this alchemical experiment of freedom. St. Germain was a high priest on the continent of Atlantis. And at that time, he served in the retreat of Archangel Zadkiel, where uh, Cuba now is, and which is today in the etheric plane over the Caribbean. And that is the retreat where both Jesus and Saint Germain received the initiations of being a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. I was shown the Akashic record of Jesus receiving from the Archangel that initiation. And I heard the words pronounced by Archangel Zadkiel upon Jesus Christ long ago in the era of Atlantis. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And it is from that initiation that the words are inscribed in the book of Hebrews. This then is the great teaching of Saint Germain that he has brought to us that we knew long ago. It is the chart of your divine self, your real self. It shows a trinity in one. The great causal body above, you see the consciousness and presence of the Father in the center. The mediator between the absolute power of God and the lower figure who is yourself in embodiment is that universal Christ personified in Jesus but also personified in you. There is only one begotten Son of God. It is the universal Christ. Jesus, the Son of Man, which is the Son of Manifestation, embodied that universal Christ. Hence, he was called Jesus the Christ, meaning Jesus the Anointed One, the one anointed with the power of the original Word. You are also the Son of Man. You are the sun of manifestation. The sunlight in your heart is a manifestation of your higher self. This son of man that you are sitting in your seat right now, you are intended to embody the Holy Spirit symbolized in that violet flame, that sacred fire surrounding you. You are intended to embody that universal Christ and to personify it on one of the seven rays with your twin flame and ultimately to embody 
that power of the word, the I am that I am. Now the ancients knew that in every age, one or a very few come who embody that word, I am that I am, that was given to Moses. That word is written in the Old Testament as Lord, and you will note it is written in all capital letters because it is an abbreviation for the Hebrew, I am that I am, the yud Hey vav Hey, which is an affirmation of being. I am that I am means I will be who I will be. That's what God said to Moses. Don't try to identify me. Don't try to put me in a matrix or a doctrine or an orthodoxy. You will see me in the outworking of events. And how do your friends know you? They know you by your actions. So what are we saying? We are saying that the word Lord, when applied to the great light of Jesus, was the acknowledgement that he did embody that word from the beginning, I am that I am, or the sacred Om. And that is why they said to him, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? Are you the one that has mastered this trinity of life, embodying the fullness of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and therefore the one whom we may call Lord. Now the New Testament does not cap Lord when referring to Jesus, but it should be capped because lowercase it only means master. Jesus was more than a human master. He was the embodiment of the word. What has been lost to us is that this is not exclusive to Jesus. That was the mystery teaching. That was the secret doctrine given to the inner circle of initiates but it is 2,000 years later, and in Aquarius, it is the teaching of the Lord our righteousness, which is the universal Christ. And Jeremiah said that Lord our righteousness would come to all of us, and we would all know the Lord from the least unto the greatest. Now in terms of that great word that comes forth, we have the gift of the luminaries of the East. These are the signs of the coming of your soul. Instead of thinking that an image of Gautama Buddha is somehow a pagan figure, look at him as a brother. Penetrate the mind of this pilgrim, this one who left wife and child to discover the cause of human suffering, was willing to pay the price to go into the higher octaves and find the path that would deliver us from being out of alignment through our untoward desires. These tremendous faces of light that are so profound are really images of your real self and your soul. These are our brothers. This is Lord Maitreya. This is Padma Sambhava, the eighth century lotus-born one. He came at a time of great trouble such as we are facing today, and he delivered the golden mantra, which comes out of the original word and, and we can use this mantra to consecrate our own chakras, our seven centers of being. The mantra is accompanied with mudras. A mudra is a hand configuration. Your hands release the light of the Son of God, just as do your chakras. The hands are secondary chakras or secret ray chakras. This folding of the hands in prayer is a consecration of ourselves to the three bodies of man. The Dharmakaya, the, the Nirmanakaya, and the Sambhogkaya, relating to the same three bodies I just showed you as the revelation of Saint Germain. This is a teaching of Buddhism, the celebration of the Trinity embodied in this temple. Now that particular hand mudra is accompanied by the mantra that you will find on page three. It is number two. And this is the consecration of our chakras for the alchemical experiment, for the practicing of the nine steps to precipitation. How do we precipitate or draw forth out of the universal light? Only through our temple, that's all we have. We have a temple and we have seven chakras. 
and that is God's gift to us. So we want to consecrate this temple now, no longer simply to be used for mundane things, but to bring forth the universal light for the blessing of life, especially for healing, especially for balancing and alleviating world karma. This is the age when not one man, but all of us is bearing world karma. That's why it's heavy, and that's why diseases and things crop out on our bodies, because we're not consuming it fast enough by the Holy Spirit. So you celebrate God and you say, Om, Ah, Hum. Om, Ah, Hum. What you are saying is, I am that I am. That great teaching of Hermes Trismegistus, as above, so below. That is a statement of all of our religion in one brief statement, as above, so below. When you become not only convinced, but by your love and devotion to God and God in man, you become infilled with the presence of God. You will prove that here below you are exactly as you are above. This may be a temporal, ephemeral, transient body, but it is made of spirit and light as well as matter. And it is intended to be so filled with light as to be transfigured just as Jesus was. That is an initiation leading to your reunion with God. It must come to you. It is yours to claim and work for. So we dedicate this body to be the temple of the Trinity. Jesus said, whoever loves me and keeps my commandment, the Father and the Son will take up their abode in him. The mighty I am presence, the Father and the Son are destined to live in this body. But if they should descend in you right now, you might not survive the light. As when those who take the Mahasamadhi have so much light in them that it blows the fuse. They can no longer be in a physical form. Saint Germain teaches us the alchemy to expand the light in the nucleus of every cell and atom, to make it a sun center, to have the union of the sun behind the sun, the spiritual sun, with the physical components of the nucleus. And the reason there is so much power released in the fission of the atom, the nuclear fission, is because we are releasing spiritual energy as well as material energy. And it is a violation because it is not done through the priesthood of Melchizedek, who are scientists as well as devotees of God of mastery. So we don't have the control over the forces we are unleashing. And Jesus prophesied this and he said, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force and nuclear reactors are taking the nucleus of the atom that contains the light of God, and they are taking it by force without giving obeisance to the light, without keeping the commandments of God, and this is what has caused the sinking of Atlantis. We must beware, and we must challenge this. It is a very important part of our mission. But first, before you take up that mission, you must consecrate your life as that living temple of God. Alchemy is a science of God. There is no other source but God for abundance. You may get it in success and becoming a master of the stock market. It's short-lived because the prosperity you want is the divine grace. There is nothing greater to be sought after than the grace of God. Now the mantra goes on, and the next syllable is Vajra. This is a very powerful release of the chakras. Gautama Buddha, when he was about to discover, discover the source of light to end human suffering, was assailed by all of the forces of death and hell. They challenged him and they said, you have no right to be doing what you are doing. That is my tree, my bow tree, that is my place. And Gautama Buddha sat in this posture and he touched the earth. This is the earth touching mudra. It's like staking your claim and saying, I shall not be moved. 
This is my place. I will sit here and I will solve the problem of being. I will go to the source. I will bring down the light and I will dare to rescue suffering humanity from the grips of the toilers and the destroyers. So with this mudra, you say Vajra, Vajra. It is a determination. I will be what I will be and nothing will stop me from going to my God according to his will. When he came back from Samadhi, he taught the Four Noble Truths. Then he went on high again and delivered to us the Eightfold Path and tremendous wisdom that was also a secret teaching. So immediately, what he is getting, he is giving. It's another law of flow of Alpha to Omega. So this mantra, this syllable is Guru and it is a palm extended with a hand cupped, cupped here at the level of below the heart and approximately at the solar plexus where Jesus said that we would have a release of a fountain of living water from our bellies. The most apt description of the light of God that flows through the solar plexus, the place of the sun, when you have purified your desire. So you can do this as a palm extended in givingness, or you can put two of the center fingers back, and it is the same. Guru, the inner God gives the inner knowledge. Freely we have received, freely give. That's a command of Jesus.